thank you for staying with us. Time now for that conversation that I promised you earlier on Beyond These Cars. And my guest is with me, Cynthia Saleta. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, before we uh, kick off with the interview, remember you can engage us on our social media handles at KTN News KE, at Grace Korea KE. You can also call in live because Cynthia's story is one inspirational story, definitely one that you really do want to listen to. So, Cynthia, I know a little bit of your story, yes. and uh, it's really inspirational, as, as I did say. But I want us to start from where it all started. <laughs> Let's yes, start yes. from the beginning. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, being a child, one needs um, a parental guidance and love. Uh, but personally, when I grew up, I didn't feel that. I always felt like I, I didn't belong. I had my dad. I also had a mom, mm -hmm. and um, but uh, you, when you get a child in class one, you're too scared, even when you soil your your shorts, you know, and uh, too scared to the point that you can't go back home. Mm -hmm. So I used to run away from home. I ran away from home. I think at least six times. Uh, the first time I ran away from home, I was in class one. In class one, uh, yeah. And uh, I was so good at telling lies. I could lie and lie and lie and, uh, and tell someone, I don't know where my home is. And you know, this is a child who, is, uh, who tops in class, who is lying that she doesn't even know where her home is. Mm -hmm. I could lie to the driver. And uh, so I gave my parents a hard time. That I can, I can agree. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, along the way, where, when I realized that I was doing the wrong thing, I was in class five. And I got, um, I was punished for stealing some cash mm -hmm. from my dad. Mm -hmm. So he punished me. I was so mad. I remember I ran away from home. At that time we were living at Kasarani. I ran, I, I went to Gidurai. I stayed outside um, for around three days. Mm -hmm. I would sleep in buildings that are not, that are being constructed. Mm -hmm. Ask me if I was scared. I don't think I was scared. I just wanted some kind of freedom. I just wanted some kind of freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why uh, most of the time uh, I would sleep there and then maybe get five, five shillings. Mm -hmm. At that time, five shillings was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And buy mandazis and, uh, and, you know, I would also make friends with some children yeah. who would play. Mm -hmm. That is 3.45. Mm -hmm. During the day, I will spend the whole day playing and then uh, eat at a kiosk at my friend's. Uh, her mother had a kiosk, mm -hmm. so I will eat there. In the evening, I will lie to them, I'm going to my aunt's place, she's not around. Mm -hmm. So after three days, there are some women who had noticed me. Mm -hmm. So one of them took me in and asked me what was wrong. I lied to her that I, had, uh, I was with my aunt because there was a crusade there. Mm -hmm. And then she told me to go to... Uh, she took me to the police station, Kasarani. Uh, from there now I was taken to, I stayed at the police station for another three days. Mm -hmm. And then I was taken to the juvenile court. Mm -hmm. From the juvenile court, I was transferred to the remand home. My story was still the same. I was with my aunt and then we, she got lost uh, during the crusade. Mm -hmm. I didn't find her. Wow. And then I told them that uh, I also changed my names. And, but that, that wasn't true. It wasn't true. It wasn't true. I told them I was in class three and I was in class five. I was very tiny. Uh, so, yeah, at the remand home, I engaged, you know, this in the remand home. Now, this is a place that hosts all types of children mm -hmm. those who run away from home, those who have murdered, those mm -hmm. who've stolen. Yeah. So I stayed there for three months because my parents actually located me after one week, mm -hmm. but it's I still refused to go home with them. So after three months now, I was undergoing counseling, mm -hmm. and then my parents were advised to take me to boarding. Mm -hmm. So they took me to boarding. Uh, in boarding, now I learned how to take care of myself. Okay. Let me cut it out at yeah. that point, because you've said a lot so far. Yeah. Uh, but I want to take you back from right when you were in class one. Mm -hmm. Why, 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 why would you run away from home in class one? How many are you? Do you have any siblings? And why? Was there anything that, that triggered it? Uh, I think, to me, at this point now, when I sit down and look back, mm -hmm. 
I just felt that I wasn't, my parents were not giving me enough attention, enough love. Mm -hmm. I never felt like I, I was loved enough, you know. I, I wanted this certain attention a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being a mother right now, I think I know that kind of attention that I was looking for. But I was not being given that attention. Okay. I always had questions. Mm -hmm. I'm a first one. And uh, yeah, my siblings are young. Mm -hmm. The one uh, I have three brothers. Okay. Yes. Now you've mentioned your ex experience in remand, yeah. and you were in class five, yes. and you did say that you know there are all sorts of children there, those who've murdered, as you said, those who've stolen, and you're here because you know you you lying, you know your your aunt, you, she got lost in a crusade yeah. <laughs> apparently. Yeah. So just take us through the experience in remand. For you said three months. I was there for three yes, months. Yes, yes. Take us through that experience. How was the first day? How was it? You know, when you found out that some of the people, the children you are with here, are murderers, as you said. How was the entire three months? Oh, uh, you'll be surprised. Uh, personally, I enjoyed my stay there. Yeah. I, I, I got some kind of freedom mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I would interact with people, and then um, we had we we, could, we had books. So I would still learn. Actually, I was brought for my exams there, mm -hmm. my class five exams. I did them from there. Uh, we had activities, talent show. I was taken home after two months. I ran away again and went back to Rumand. I actually took myself back there. So I guess my parents, my dad actually, he just he just never knew how to handle me. He mm. would ask himself why. But uh, as I go on with the story, you'll now understand why. Now I I I always felt sure yeah that sure. way because um I came to realize when I was in form one mm -hmm. yeah because all that time well, since I went to boarding I never ran away from home again mm -hmm. because now I had limited time with my parents mm -hmm. I would uh, access them during the holidays that is like around three weeks mm -hmm. and uh, among the three weeks I go back to for tuition mm -hmm. yeah so in form one before I joined form one I did my KCPE. So one night uh, during that period when we went to go to Form 1, mm -hmm. uh, my parents had uh, disagreed. And then uh, my mom, she had been sick for around a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had depression, so she was still recovering. So in 2009, uh, that night she, they had uh, disagreed with my dad. Mm -hmm. And then now uh, she called me and my cousins we used to stay with. Now she started uh, outlining one by one, telling us, you know, you, you're like this, you're like this, you're like this, and then was the last one. Mm -hmm. So she told me that uh, you, you've uh, disturbed us for a long time, you ran away from home, I don't know what, I sacrifice a lot of things, and you're not even my child. And you're not even my child. Yeah, so I had uh, I had that feeling for a long time. In class two, there's a girl who had told me, mm -hmm. she had overheard the parents talking, her mom and my mom, they used to be best friends. Mm -hmm. So when I asked, I was told, oh, this is just lies. Yeah, because I started living with my dad uh, when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. I used to live with my aunt. Mm -hmm. So of course I had these questions. Where were, where were my parents? Why weren't I living with them when I was young? Yeah, so that night she, she told her, she just told me, oh, you're not my child, you keep disturbing me, nini, nini. so that's where I got my answers. So personally to me, uh, that was the hardest period of my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. because my dad was not ready to talk about it. He, my dad used to be a, he was a silent person, like he would just talk one or two words. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't ready to open up and talk about the story. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of questions. And I wanted to know the answers. Mm -hmm. I joined from one, a very disturbed person, mm -hmm. because it was around two weeks after I had known the truth. Uh, since I didn't have those answers, I just joined that school. And I wanted some kind of, to feel like I belonged somewhere. So while I was in from one, I went to a school. I had an uncle who taught there. So the guy had told uh, almost all the, you know, those popular teachers. So he had told them that uh, I have my daughter, she's coming to this school. Mm -hmm. So when I joined that school, uh, the Form 3s and the Form 4s, I was very popular. I had a lot of friends between those two streams. 
So I was just a form one with a lot of friends mm -hmm. in uh, upper streams, of course, questions started. So um, along uh, the last weeks, the last month of first term, mm -hmm. I got, um, I, st I had rumors going around, oh, this girl, there's a form one. At that time, I didn't know it was the one. Mm -hmm. There's a form one who is um, lesbian and she's a devil worshiper. Mm -hmm. She recruits people in her group. Uh, she has a lot of form threes and a lot of form fours. Um, mm. I, towards the end of the first term, I came to know it was me. Mm -hmm. But what I, I, I just, I never told my dad anything. I just kept quiet mm -hmm. because I knew when we, we went back for second term, I would have, uh, you know, the rumors would have died. So I would start anew. Mm -hmm. So when we opened uh, our second term, I was, I was ready to start anew. But oh my ladies, don't forget. So the rumors continued. Mm -hmm. I would walk and um, I would hear people say, uh, there's the girl, <laughs> uh, there's the devolushipper, there's the lesbian. And I would look back and it's me they're pointing at. And uh, I had a chain. Uh, that chain I remember very well. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was joining, my dad had asked me, had told me, since you've been primary and you've been in boarding school, mm. I don't need uh, the key holder of hanging, so I'll buy you something different. Mm. So he asked me to choose. I chose that chain. So because it was a small chain, I would uh, wrap it around my my ankle, mm -hmm. my wrist, mm -hmm. and then yeah, and then I would hold it, my keys in my hands. Mm. So yeah, that chain was said to uh, that I was using that because it was very unique. Uh, this is the chain she uses too. You see, she doesn't leave that key down. You know, when people, when women are looking yeah, for stories, yeah, they will yeah. dig and dig sure, until they sure. find facts. Sure. So the hard truth hit me that now, yeah, this is me. This is me that people are talking about. I'm the one who's being accused of being a lesbian, who of being a devil worshiper. So a lot of those friends that I have, I had left. A lot of them just left. Mm -hmm. And I was, but I, I remember I had a few who stuck by me. Mm. There's actually one who kept, she would go to the washrooms and her fellow classmates, she was a form four, mm -hmm. they would lash her in the, in the washrooms, talk a lot of shit and everything, mm -hmm. but she stuck by my side. I became sick. I just, I, I used to feel my stomach, I just felt funny. Mm -hmm. I stopped going to class. The sick bay was my friend. I would wake up go to this, have my shower, mm -hmm. go to the sick bay. For around the whole of June, I didn't attend any class mm -hmm. because actually I was just scared of walking, you know, the paveways and you know, people are pointing fingers at me, the mm -hmm. teachers are looking at me weirdly. Mm -hmm. My uncle was also not talking to me and everyone is questioning. So one time I went home mm -hmm. for treatment at my aunt's place and then I just told her, just call my dad, I want him to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time he was busy, so he said he was going to come when he got time. Mm -hmm. So when he came, we talked. And I told him, you know, I'm in this school and people are saying this and this and this. And then, you know, he used to be, uh, I don't know, he was, I don't care. So he was, uh, you know, they'll just keep quiet. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was, no, change my key holder if that is what will make them stop talking. <laughs> and he did. He bought me another key holder. He brought it back to school. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then one day, I actually even joined the CU. I would forego entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I joined CU just to prove mm -hmm. that I wasn't. Yeah. Said, yeah. Sure. And then uh, during the period I went home, I came back to school, but uh, no one had told me this. Mm -hmm. So when I joined CU, you know, you joined CU and even, and it's, it's like a breaking news. Mm. Even the officials of CL, hey, today we have a visitor, you know, we should give glory oh. to God. And I'm like, okay. So I'm even, eh, I make, but I, I just assumed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now I, some form twos told me, you know, when you went home, the home science teacher asked your classmates to write letters uh, describing who you are. Like she asked them to even to give an opinion of who I was. 
honestly, I can say I felt betrayed mm. because I had friends in that class. No one had told me that had happened. No one had told me that, you know, when you went home, this and this happened. No one. I felt bad. I, I didn't know what to do. So what I did, I wrote a letter to the class mm -hmm. and I asked them, I asked them if I was part of their class because no one was talking to me and uh, yeah, and I apologized if I had cost them anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I put the letter in the class prefect's desk because I knew I wasn't going to be present due to the morning preps. I had stopped going for morning preps. Mm -hmm. So what she, what at that morning, uh, around six, people used the preps used to end at six. Mm -hmm. Someone came to the to my dorm, the head girl and the house, whatever, mm -hmm. and they woke me up and they told me the deputy is calling you. So I went to, I put on clothes. I went to the staff room. At the staff room, uh, that week, the same Umsan's teacher who had told my classmates to write yeah, letters yes. about me. Sure was the one who was on duty mm -hmm. and then the deputy was there so she's she started cursing me and she sent that the teacher to the office mm -hmm. to go and bring canes mm -hmm. so she was busy telling me oh you know zile mashetani umeleta issue you're going to go back with them mm -hmm. and i was there just wondering what was going on mm -hmm. no one had told me what was going on. Mm -hmm. So when the canes came and then she, she used to be a bit plump so she could hold four canes in one hand. So she put me down and she beat me senselessly. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember how many canes those were. Mm -hmm. Yeah and she 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 beat me while she cast and cast and cast and and I was like okay but I remember I while I was down there I told God I don't know what is going on, and you're the one who knows where I'm going all, mm. through all this. Mm -hmm. But I just want to ask, because you know, she's a teacher that you told when she can't see, you can't, you know. And I was telling God, please, let me get out of this place. Uh, just let me just stand out of here while I'm in one piece. Mm -hmm. So when she finished, I stood up, and then she told me to kneel down at the flag post. Mm -hmm. So I just went and knelt down there. You know, I've still not been told what my mistake is. So a few people came to talk to me. And now that is when I was told, you know, in the morning there's a girl who fainted. And then I don't know. And then she fainted. And then, you know, the story was not even adding up. So what you want to but when you wrote, the, the letter you wrote, that is why uh, that happened. That's why she fainted. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and I'm like, how, how does one faint with a letter I wrote? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had him even so like, sorry to say this, but those teachers were even stupid. Yeah, because how people faint, and this is a girl who has a history of fainting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, when people finished manual work, I packed my things. I was mm -hmm. told to pack my things. Mm -hmm. I packed my things. My aunt was called because my parents were in Nairobi. So when she came, uh, she was called to the office. She was not given an explanation. Mm -hmm. She was just told to take me home, and then they were going to communicate. Yeah, so we went home, and she was asking me, you know, you want to come back, or can we start looking for another school? I was... I'm still dazed. I'm still confused, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm still asking myself questions. And now I was scared. I didn't know how my parents were going to react, specifically my mother. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how it was going to go down. Mm -hmm. Because around the same for one, we had not been in good terms. After the story, we were not talking like on one on one, mm -hmm. sana sana. Mm -hmm. So I was scared of what was going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. So what I did, um, my dad, sent transport he told me to go to nairobi so that i could join another school for the time being mm -hmm. because of of time i traveled to nairobi i didn't go home actually i took myself to central police station mm -hmm. i got there and i told them i had done this and this and this in school and i'm scared of going home so they should call my dad 
for him to come and uh, you know mm -hmm. we talk from there mm -hmm. and then my dad was called and he was ah that child she's disturbing me and he didn't come he came at around three in the morning mm -hmm. he was drunk so the policeman sent him away so that night i slept mm -hmm. at central police station mm -hmm. then the following day now he came in the morning he was taken to the children's department and he they talked to him so we went we left for home at also he stopped to gas the car i ran away from the car mm -hmm. i was not ready to go home actually mm -hmm. i was not ready to face my mom mm -hmm. so i ran away from the car and I loitered around all sorts, around all sorts. In the evening, I got myself back at Kasarun mm -hmm. police station. Mm -hmm. At this time, I didn't tell a lie. I just told them, I've done this and this and this. And my dad, you know, he had not even asked me what, what was wrong, what mm -hmm. had happened. Mm -hmm. He had not asked me. Sure. So I just, I just wasn't ready to go back home. At Kasarun police station, I was transferred to a children's home mm -hmm. in Zimmerman. It's called Bishop Lugi Lokati. Mm -hmm. I stayed there. Uh, the, the, the manager there, he used to counsel me. He even uh, used to talk to my dad. I stayed there for two months, from July to August. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, in August, my aunt came, talked to me, and decided and told me, let us go to upcountry. I stay with you there, and then we can organize with the dad for school. OK. Um, Cynthia, we need to take a break. But before we take that break, I need to know what all this did to you. Because you've uh, spoken a lot and brought out a lot of emotion. But I need to know what all the years, especially as a child before joining high school, and now not experiencing love at home and uh, the same, you know, carrying forward to school, what all this did to you? So, yeah, I was getting there. Mm. Well, I, well, I joined my new school. I was, actually, I was not even ready to join that school because when my dad told me it's a girl's school, I told him, no, I'm not going to a girl's school mm -hmm. because I was scared. I had told him, if you're not taking me back to the school that I was, I actually wanted to go back there. I just had this zeal, you know, of proving to them that I wasn't the kind of thing that mm -hmm. they were describing me as. Mm -hmm. uh, but he told me, no, you're not going back there. Uh, but again, now, in this new school, I actually didn't go for my meals for almost a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I was scared of being in one, you know, one congregation with a lot of girls, mm -hmm. people, people just start talking. So I just used to associate with my classmates at a very low level. I remember my classmates, my new classmates used to say, ah, this new girl, you know, she doesn't talk to people mm -hmm. because I was scared, mm -hmm. really scared. Mm -hmm. And at night I would cry a lot because now I had joined a new school. Mm -hmm. Again, I had come to this school and you know, my dad had not even, he had not actually even sat me down and talked to me and known what I was going through, he had not totally. Mm -hmm. So this is a new school I'd come to again. I didn't know where I was supposed to begin with. And you know, he had told me, you know, if you mess up in this school again, now you're going to come to my house and become my house help, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how to do it. At that time, I can say right now, I can say that I was depressed. Mm -hmm. I remember in my old school, I drank a whole cup of detergent. It used to be called gentle. Mm -hmm. I studied and I drank a whole cup. I didn't want to die, but I just didn't want to live. Mm -hmm. I was confused, but actually it didn't make, it didn't harm me. I just, you know, diarrhea and all. When it backfired, I, I, also, I took several tablets of Panadol. And they also didn't work. So I was frustrated, I was telling God, you want me to live and you're not even making my living any easier. Any easier, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The detergent part, I, I don't even know if my mom knows. I've never told anyone. I, mm. Yeah. I just, oh. I just wanted to, to I, I didn't want to die, but I also, I didn't want to live. Yeah. It was, it was hard mm -hmm. not having someone to talk to. It was the toughest. Sure, Cynthia.